So we've talked about three kinds of problems so far. Shortest path problems, constraint satisfaction problems, combinatorial optimization problems, and I'm going to add just one more fourth type, which is problems where you have an adversary. Adversarial search. So in all these first three, you make whatever choice you want, and it might be a good choice, might be a bad choice, but you can change it and try again and see what happens. It's all up to you. In this last category, you have something else, whether it's an opponent or whether it's just nature that makes some of the choices. Like, I can choose to buy a house in Durham, and nature can choose to have an ice storm and cut off my power. In the next time step, I choose to buy a generator, and nature chooses to cut my natural gas line so I can't run my generator. Um, there's decisions against some opponent that might prevent you from getting to the goal. All right, does everyone understand this kind of problem? It's pretty intuitive. There's another agent that's operating against you. How do I make a plan in the presence of an adversary? I can't just use A star because A star is just going to have me take actions. I need to be considering, well, what might the adversary do at each step? All right. Now, there are a lot of ways of going about this, and there are a zillion algorithms for, for dealing with games. We're going to do the, the, the basics. Um, the point of view that we're going to take is that we want the best assured outcome. So no matter what the opponent does, we're going to do a, the, the, have the best outcome for ourselves as possible. So it's a very conservative approach. All right, some terminology. Uh, a move is actually, I make a move, the adversary makes a move. Each of those single steps is called apply. Um, so, let's see, do I have a picture of a nice picture of a tree? Yeah, I do. Okay, um, we're going to do tic-tac-toe in the last three minutes here. Um, now, hmm, let me start off with a picture. Um, here it's my turn to move. Um, that's, the, that's the current state of the game. It's called a game when you're someone else. Um, I mean, you may like them, you may not like them, you may want to be playing against them, you may not, but whatever it's called, it's called a game. Um, even if it's like a couple people driving to work, even if they don't know about each other, if they affect each other, if like one of them could be causing a traffic jam that the other one could run into, they're together playing a game. Life is a giant game. Um, so there are different moves I could make. Right? So we draw out the first ply of different moves I could make. And then come the moves of my opponent. Right? And then for each move my opponent could make, right, those, the, the moves of my opponent give rise to other board positions. And then it's going to be my turn. And I'm a, I'll have some moves available to me. This tree is called the Minimax tree. Because let's, we'll, we'll adopt the convention that I'm trying to maximize my score. So the player at this level is trying to maximize. The player, this opponent, is trying to minimize my score, or in general, maximize his own score. Um, and then at the next level, we max his turn. And then somewhere down at the bottom of the tree, dot, 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 we'll have terminal states where the game is over. And there'll be some cost or outcome, like you know, 10 or 5 or negative 17. So the full minimax tree, you start at the current state of the game, and you unfold all the way down until the game is over. Why do people not use minimax trees much for solving games? Yes, exactly. Trees are growing exponentially, right? So 
In chess, the branching factor is like 14, and the average move game is 40 moves long. So I think we did this before, 14 to the 40th, really large number. Um, so the full minimax tree is, is just too big. So what people typically do for game tree search is, anybody want to hazard a guess? A uh, heuristic, yeah. How do you use the heuristic? What is it, what is it for? As in, we're going to modify this tree somehow. The tree is getting too big. It's growing exponentially as we go down. We can't afford to go all the way down. So we go down a certain number of moves and stop. Yeah, in a lot of game programs, if you play against a, an AI, there's like a difficulty. And that's usually like, how deep does the opponent, does the built-in AI go down the game tree? Um, so you just go down some certain number of levels, and then you run some heuristic evaluation function which is totally not a cost to go at all. You guys have to be really nimble on the terminology in this class. I apologize for having to summarize what people out do out there in the messy real world. But you run something called the static evaluator function uh, here and get some number, which, which is supposed to summarize how good that state of the board is for you. And then you just do minimax up from there, pretending that this is sort of the end state. So fixed depth minimax search with a static evaluator is like the bread and butter of game tree search. That is the basic way to go. All right? 